So thank you so much for having this event today. Um, it's, it's so vital to have attention thrown upon this subject, and it's so vital to have it in Parliament. So I'm kind of thrilled that you're holding this. And um, it's been very frustrating at times that um, even though that we have managed to produce sort of stories and so on, it's Shamir's story, as we know, last year, which, you know, enormous personal sacrifice that he gave to get this information out. And we still see the way that actually nothing has sort of, you know, there's still, that still managed to be ignored. And it's sort of like the elephant in the room, really. So, and, and again, with Damien's report last week, the publication of that was so vital. It was such a huge amount of work that had gone into it. And I just loved it when I woke up on Monday morning and it was across <laughs> the news cycle. And then two hours later, it was kind of bumped off. So I just think it's so important that we keep trying to find different ways of, of sort of keeping this in the news. Um, my, one of the things that was really interesting, you know, that you talked about there, you said that we still don't know what happened in the referendum. And um, I just think it's really important that, again, we just keep banging that drum. Because why should we allow Facebook to get away with that? Why? They've got the answers. They're just refusing to give them to us. And I just really don't think that's acceptable. And um, I'm much more hardline, actually, than your reports. And my, my view is that this is a foreign company which has played a pivotal role in our elections and it is unaccountable to Parliament. So as far as I'm concerned, it should be banned from future use until it sends its representatives here and gives us the evidence and the answers that we need. Um, I, love your, I love your thing though, of it, the idea of it being a big polluter. I think that's really, I think that's a really helpful way to look at it. And I think also to think of that these technology companies do work and operate and act in the same way as the big multinationals and the way that we've seen them sort of act across the world. And you really, as a journalist, you really, you sort of, when you see the ways that they try and shut down your stories and the aggressive PR moves that they use against it, that becomes really clear. The, the story that we did in the Observer at the weekend, which was about the... The, this incredible global lobbying operation that Facebook has had going for years and essentially has had sort of politicians and legislators in its pocket and has used a sort of combination of threats and promises to keep all these different countries across the world in line. I do think we're still only scratching the surface of what's going on. Um, and again, the thing, I think, you, you know, you've talked about mainstream network there. It's just astonishing to me that we're still in this situation now that this, this incredibly important live political issue, vital to our country's future, and it is being influenced by actors and by organisations and money. And we have no idea who these people are. We don't know if they're British. We don't know where that money's coming from. We, we, it, it, it's, but these adverts are out there every single day on social media. I mean, it's, it is, I, do, I do hope that one day we will look back upon this era and think that, you know, we were sort of sleepwalking and um, we will look back upon this as this terrible time which we managed to, you know, eventually legislate and protect ourselves from. Because at the moment, I do just feel we're incredibly vulnerable, and we can only see, you know, all, we we only see the very tip of the iceberg, and and that is sort of horrifically scary enough. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carol.